Everybody ready for some dapper goodness? So let me tell you about myself here a little bit first. I'm Matthew Groves. I'm a developer for a company called Heuristic Solutions. I work from home. I mainly work with .NET. I have some very impressive acronyms up there that you should all be impressed by. Um, but actually, more importantly, this sentence here is what I want to highlight, is that I don't consider myself an expert, especially when it comes to SQL database, SQL admin. I can introduce you to some experts, and I've been using it for a long time, but I'm, I'm not an expert in database stuff. So uh, if you have really hard questions, I might just punt on those. I also have a book that I wrote for sale, nothing to do with uh, today's presentation, but you should buy it anyway. It's on AOP and .NET. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start talking about Dapper. So the, t the title of the session is Drop the Big Mapper, Switch to Dapper. So first of all, I wanna say don't forget the Big Mapper. Um, ORMs are very useful. I interact with an ORM every day. I'm not here to tell you that you should not ever use an ORM. Uh, they are uh, very good tools and they have their purpose uh, for sure. So, so don't do that. And secondly, don't switch to Dapper. And by that I mean don't just blindly pick Dapper because I'm talking about it. There's other great ORMs out there, uh, Petapoco and Massive and Simple.Data and others that you should check out that are comparable to Dapper, but maybe they have an API that you like better or a different license or, or what have you. So I'm going to show you Dapper, but please check out the other ones while you're at it. Uh, I'm also not here to instigate some sort of cat fight. I'm not going to take either of these positions. Uh, about ORMs or against ORMs. I'm not interested in that kind of fight um, because believe it or not, we can actually use them both in the same code base. And they, can, they both have their uh, you know, ideal purposes. So uh, let's, let's do that. Let's pick the tool that's best or tools that are best. So if you're looking for a cat fight about ORMs, it's not gonna happen in this session. Uh, I'm, I'm more here to address this, these questions I see from my colleagues uh, is that Sometimes you get into an uh, ORM and you have to jump through a bunch of hoops to get it to work. And if it's a complex situation or you know, slightly or very complex situation, the SQL being generated can be crazy, uh, inefficient, not what you were hoping to get. And you have to jump through some more hoops to get it to work the way you want to. When it would really just be nice to drop into SQL and write the SQL that I know I can write and just do that. You know, SQL is a great language for interacting with database sets, relational databases. So let's put more of an emphasis on SQL when it makes sense to. So uh, before I really get started in talking about Dapper, I want to tell you this up front so you have a chance to leave and go to the other sessions. There is no iQueryable with Dapper or other micro ORMs. So let that just sink in for a minute here. It means you can't use link. Um, on Dapper. Now you can, you, you can still use link, but it's linked to objects in memory, not linked to a database. It's not a link provider here. So there is no link. This is not the end of the world. Like I said, SQL sometimes makes more sense to write. Uh, you, so you will have to write SQL with Dapper. So again, if you don't want to do that, now's the time to exits are here and here. Um, but iQueryBull isn't necessarily always what it's cracked up to be. So who in here uses ORMs like Entity Framework and Hibernate, the bigger ones like that? Okay, good, a lot of hands. How, how many of you have ever, using the link provider, gotten a not supported exception? Well, quite a few, okay. Now why is that? It's because iQueryable is a lie. It's a leaky abstraction. Um, it doesn't support literally anything you can throw into a link expression because that's just unrealistic. And there's inconsistent support between uh, different link providers. Because it's hard to write a link provider. It's very hard to write a good link provider. So it's a leaky abstraction, and it kind of uh, forces you to uh, couple yourself to a specific ORM implementation sometimes. So maybe, maybe that's a sort of a pie in the sky architectural concern. But you know, iQueryable is not a silver bullet. All right, now that the theater kind of looks like this, and you guys have all gone to other sessions, let's actually get on to the details about ORM. So why a micro ORM? And this is really a, a question of why and also what it is. It is a, uh, it's like an ORM, but it's much faster in terms of its performance because you're much closer to 
the, uh, the database provider than, uh, than an ORM is. There's much less layers of abstraction between the two. And it's uh, much more simple to use. There's uh, not a lot of setup involved, not a lot of configuration, not a lot of really uh, variety of features, things like that. It's very simple, sort of a way to execute SQL commands and get back SQL result sets. And it's all just built around that. Uh, well, you may have used ADO.NET before. Anyone familiar with ADO.NET? It's been around for, well, as old as the moon in terms of technical years, right? 15 years or whatever. ADO.NET is pretty fast, but has a lot of ceremony around it, a lot of extra work you need to you know, get a SQL reader going and get that into an object and loop through that and all those things. And so micro ORMs like Dapper will help us to reduce that ceremony while still keeping very close to the same speed as ADO.NET. Now why Dapper uh, specifically? Why do I like Dapper? Why am I talking about Dapper? Well, these are, these are the reasons why. And again, like I said, look at the other ORMs. They are all very good. But these are the reasons I like Dapper specifically, is that it's been battle tested by Stack Overflow. The Stack Overflow guys created Dapper because they originally created Stack Overflow with Link to SQL. Uh, an ORM, not a really heavy ORM, but an ORM, and they ran into performance issues. So they started to convert pieces of their site over to use Dapper when it made sense to. And we'll talk more about that later. But I like that it's been battle tested by a huge site like Stack Overflow. Now, I may not ever create a site th that scale, but it's nice to know that the same tool I'm using is being hammered over and over every day by a very popular site. Secondly, I like that Dapper works with any implementation of ADO.NET. So these are some common ones here, but anything that implements that IDB connection interface is supported by Dapper. So you can use it with any database you like. I'll be using SQLite today in the demos just because it's super easy to put out on GitHub and you guys can install it and run those tests. Um, it was, I think it was built with SQL Server in mind, but again, it's based on that ADO.NET interface, so all of these should work. It's also uh, the fastest. What I mean by the fastest is that there's a series of benchmarks um, that compare ADO.NET, Dapper, other micro ORMs, and entity frameworks, um, you know, execute SQL statement or whatever it's called, where you can execute a statement. Just comparing them over, you know, several hundred selects over a period of time and just comparing them how much time it took. And Dapper is the fastest next to ADO.NET. So I just sort of sorted by time ascending and said, okay, let's try Dapper. Uh, I would encourage you to check those uh, benchmarks for yourself, though. Don't just go based on what they're saying. All right, so let's talk about some coding now. At the end of this, I'm just going to show a bunch of unit tests on the screen here. These are all passing unit tests. Everybody comfortable with unit tests, by the way? Nothing too crazy here I'm going to show you. Just using end unit, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, and I have code available, so you can download this code from GitHub, the slides and everything, and run these tests yourselves and play with them. And like I said, I'm using SQLite, so you don't need to have SQL Server or Oracle installed to, to play with this code. To use Dapper, you start with some implementation of IDB connection. So in my examples, I'm going to be using SQLite. I'm going to be using in-memory SQLite. So at the beginning of my test, I'm going to create a brand new database in memory, perform some tests on that database, and at the end of the test, I'm disposing that, just get rid getting rid of that database. So it's a fresh database every test. With SQLite, this is very easy to do. Once you have that instance, Dapper is simply a set of five extension methods. These five here, which we'll go over all of these and then plus uh, five more asynchronous versions of the same method. So you have execute and you have execute async. I won't go over the async stuff too much, but it is out there. Um, so I'm gonna start by showing you the very basic ones, execute and execute scalar, just to get an idea of how this works. It's a very, very simple, most basic approach we can do. And then I'll move on to the more cool stuff with query and, and query multiple. So here's the signature of execute. This is some pseudocode here. You have a database connection object, and you call an execute extension method on it. The only thing you're required to pass it is a SQL string. And then it will execute that SQL against your database connection. 
These other things, you can parameterize your uh, queries. Optionally, you can use a transaction, you can specify a timeout, you can specify a command type. This is good for stored procedures, for instance. All these are optional, but we'll show a couple of them in the code here. But that's all it is. It's an extension method with a string of SQL. You execute it, and that's it. Now you still have to manage the connection yourself. So you have to open this, oops, open this connection, close the connection, dispose the connection, that sort of thing. Dapper is just going to provide some extension methods on it. Okay, and execute scalar, some more pseudocode here. Very similar, but notice that this has a type parameter of T. Execute scalar, as you know probably from ADO.net, will return the first cell of the first row of your SQL result set. This is good for things like counts or max or, or just single pieces of data you want to get. Again, the same thing, just pass in a SQL string. It will return um, a variable of that type that you specify. So if I select count, then I'm going to get int, and that will give me an int in my return value. I can parameterize and do all the same transaction things with execute scalar. So I'm about to get into some code here. Any questions so far? Okay, so here is my first unit test, just to demonstrate execute and execute scalar together. So um, again, I'm creating a brand new database here at the very beginning. So I have to create a table and then insert some data into that table by using connection.execute. This connection is my SQLite connection that's open when this test is running. And then I'm going to execute scalar to say, give me the count of everything in foo and I'm going to assert that there's one record in there. These tests all pass, by the way, just in case you're wondering. Now I'm doing an update, setting that field two to 998. Execute scalar again to make sure that is in fact in the database, so that passes. Then I'm going to a delete and see that the count should be down to zero, and that passes. So just with execute, execute scalar, I've demonstrated insert, update, select, delete, and create table. So that's the very basics there of Dapper. This is all kind of set up here. This isn't terribly interesting right now. I realize that, but sort of want to get the basics out of the way first. Any questions about this code you're looking at? Okay. <clears throat> here is a version of this that's using parameters. So very similar, I'm creating a person table. I'm going to insert into person one record, and I'm going to put parameters in my SQL. So at name, at shoe size. And then I can use the second argument of this method to pass in my parameter values. In this case, I'm using an anonymous object with mat and shoe size as those names. Dapper is going to look at those names and say, yeah, this one goes to here, and this one goes to here, because it's the same name. This doesn't have to be an anonymous object. It can be any C-sharp object as long as those field or uh, property names line up. So it will take care of those for you. And then I'm just asserting that that did in fact happen, so there's one row in there. So if you compare this to ADO.net, this is already way more concise because I'm not using different uh, you know, SQL parameter objects, things like that. I'm just passing in an object and it's using a convention to map them together. A little more complex here, just want to show off uh, transactions a little bit. You guys are familiar with database transactions, begin, commit, rollback, that sort of thing. You can do that with Dapper, so I'm creating a table. I'm going to insert a record into that table. I'm going to mark this transaction as committed, so everything should go fine. It should insert that record. The second one, I'm inserting a record, but I'm actually rolling back that transaction, so it doesn't actually happen. It gets rolled back. And at the end, I would expect there to be one record in that table, and that is, in fact, the case. So notice I, pa I just created this transaction and passed it in as a parameter to my execute method. So that's one way you can do transactions. I typically don't do it this way. I use transaction scope because I'm using SQL Server. Um, so anything that supports transaction scope, you can still do with Dapper. But I just wanted to show you that it does have the capability of passing in the transaction object there. So not crazy groundbreaking stuff yet, but Again, this is just getting the basics out of the way. So any questions so far? All right. 
Let's go on to query. So this is where it gets a little more interesting. So I showed you at the beginning there were two query extension methods. One of them's query, one of them's query of t. It's the type parameter. This one is query, so no type parameter up there. But I can call query and then pass in a SQL string. Again, that's the only thing that's required. But I can also pass in parameters, transactions, all the other stuff. And it's going to give me back a collection of dynamic objects, one for each row. So this is a key point with Dapper. It returns an object per row of your data set. Is everybody familiar with this dynamic keyword in C Sharp enough to know kind of how it works? All right. So it's going to give you dynamic objects. So here's some code kind of showing that in action here. So again, I'm creating a table, inserting some data, and then querying it back out with query. I'm getting a I enumerable of dynamic as the result. So then I can see that, okay, that is going to be a collection of size one. And the first one is going to be mat, and the first one shoe size is going to be 13. And if you're in Visual Studio typing this, name and shoe size you won't get IntelliSense for, because this is a dynamic object, right? So I could put any name I want to on there. But Dapper is going to put the values into the same names as the field you selected from the data set. In this case, it is name and shoe size. If I change my query to rename those, those fields, like I say, select name as full name, it's going to be full name here instead of name. So it's going based on what the result set is telling it. Again, uh, using anonymous object here, not required. You can use a plain old object. So that's dynamic. If you guys like dynamic and just want to work with dynamic, that's all great. In C Sharp, though, I prefer, however, to work with a more strong type object. So I generally don't use that method. I use query of t instead. Here's some pseudocode. If I say query of t, it'll give me a I enumerable of that type back. And again, one for each row. And the same uh, parameters apply as before. So it's going to try to map those fields to the fields in the object that you specify. So an example of that, again, with person and shoe size. Now I'm saying query of type person. The same query, select star from person. I'm doing a two list this time, not, not a big difference there. Uh, it's going to give me a result of the count of one. And again, I can say, okay, name is Matt, shoe size is 13. However, these are strongly typed now, so there actually is a person class that exists in my code base that has name and shoe size. Yeah? So the question was, is there any way to set up a translate, automatic translate, to get the naming convention from the uh, query into the object? Uh, I don't think Dapper supports anything like that. Um, that certainly sounds like a good idea for an extension on Dapper. I know why you're asking, because we have really terrible uh, field names in our database. And we don't want to use a bunch of as is over and over is what you're getting at. So that's a very good question. Uh, but I don't think Dapper has anything like that. Yeah, up there. Uh, so the question is, can this be an anonymous type right here? So what would you put in there for an anonymous type? I'm kind of confused by what you're asking here. Um, no, no, I don't. I don't think. I don't think C sharp kind of supports that. Do you guys have a follow up comment or? Yeah, well, like a dynamic one. Yeah. yeah, that may be what you're looking for. Is is this one back here where I'm not specifying a type? It gives me back a dynamic object, which I could then you know map to whatever else. Does that, does that help? Did I answer your question anyway? Okay. You may be running up against a limitation of a C sharp there. Okay, so any more questions on this one here? Yeah. Right. Sure. 
Sure, yeah, okay, you could do a, a dot select, for instance, and do the mapping in C sharp. Yeah, so he was just following up with a, with a way to, another way to get those names to line up. Sure, and, and, and to that extent, there might be a way to write a generalized extension method on that to sort of translate, you know, give your naming convention and, and do the translation for you. But that's not in Dapper. <laughs> okay, so um, another thing, just want to comment here, if I had another uh, property down here, like a date of birth, for instance, and that was not selected from the table, that field would re remain uh, the default value. So like for date time, it's like, what, 1900 or something. For string, it would be null, that sort of thing. Uh, and if I didn't have shoe size in here, for instance, Dapper wouldn't barf, it just basically would take the shoe size result from the result set and just ignore it. Map, map just the name. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, it would come back as full name, it would not get mapped to this. And actually I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show that exact thing here in a couple slides. Yeah, so mismatched column name. So here in this case I've got a query, the same thing as before, but now I'm saying name as person name. So I'm renaming it in SQL, but I'm still trying to map it to that same person class, that person object with name. So in that case, name's gonna end up being null because Dapper is not going to know that person name is a, it should be mapped to name. So it's going strictly based on the names here. Okay, so any more questions on query before I keep going a little further on that? Yeah. Oh, right here. Right. I don't know, that's a really good question. I'm not sure what would happen. Um, if we have time, we can uh, open up Visual Studio and write a test for that and see what happens, yeah. So I actually gave this talk a, a few days ago at a user group when we had some more time and we were open up Visual Studio and writing all kinds of tests to play with Dapper because I got a lot of great questions like that. But a little time constraint here, so if we have time at the end, we'll definitely do that. Um, but my guess, if this was nullable, it would probably work just fine. Um, I don't know what would happen since it's not nullable. Okay, any more questions on query? Yeah, yeah, any, any object you pass in there as long as the names match up to the parameter names in your SQL, it'll be fine. Okay, so another kind of interesting little uh, way that Dapper works is with a bulk insert. Let's say you wanna do, you know, five inserts in the same, uh, same SQL command, uh, Dapper will take a collection of parameters and execute that query one time for each parameter. So just an example of how that works. Again with person, now I'm inserting a, this is an array, anonymous array of anonymous objects. There's five of them. So Dapper's going to execute insert five times. Now that's five times in one SQL command, not five separate commands. So you can sort of do a bulk insert this way. You could build this up with a loop if you wanted to and pass it in to the parameters object. So, but you can see that uh, when I get the count back out, there's gonna be five in there. So that's just kind of a cool trick. You pass in a collection, yeah. Um, I, it's not a trans transaction per se, because it's just one command, right? It's going to send them all five at the same time. It's going to be like a, it would be the equivalent of you writing insert out five times in one string and sending it over. Uh, if, if that's the way default SQL server behavior is, then yeah, yeah. So that might be a good place for a transaction, sure. Okay, nothing crazy there. Using the in keyword, anybody familiar with in and SQL? Where you want to select things that might be one of a set? This is supported with parameterization. It's just pretty easy and slick. I just thought I'd show it to you because I use this a lot. So I've inserted a four records into this table with various shoe sizes. And now here's my SQL. I'm saying, give me all the persons, give me the count of all the persons where their shoe size is in this parameter shoe sizes. And then as my uh, 
parameters object here. It's an anonymous object, but shoe sizes is itself an array of 10 and 11. So this is going to translate in Dapper to where shoe sizes in, you know, parentheses 10, comma 11. And Dapper's going to make that translation for you in the SQL. And so we'll get two of them because we have Walter and Claymore here who have 10 and 11. So something I use often, I thought I'd show it to you, not terribly groundbreaking there either. Still pretty simple stuff. All right. Shoe sizes, I forgot about the red boxes. Okay, so now we're going to get into a little more complex stuff here um, because not all of our domains are just simple, flat tables that aren't related to each other, right? So we're going to talk about multi-mapping and joining and defining those relationships within the objects. So again, I want to restate up here that Dapper maps every row in their result set to an object. So every row in Dapper can, you know, gets, tries to get mapped to that object of the type you specify. But with multi-mapping, you can actually tell Dapper to split that row into multiple parts and map it to a different type. And then you have to specify, well, how are these types related, if, if in anything. And it's still going to return one object uh, per row, but now you have the chance to actually create relationships between those objects. So here is my domain, very simple, but I'm sure this is a very common sort of thing you've seen before, a parent-child relationship. I have a um, hero, and that hero has a name, and he's assigned to a comic book company. And comic book company has a name. I'm sure you're already thinking about the SQL uh, schema for how this would be represented in the database with a foreign key, and ID, and so on. So here is how I'd set it up in SQLite, creating a table, inserting a record, for a comic book company. This is SQLite specific syntax to get back the ID of the record I just inserted. It's like scope identity in uh, SQL Server, if you're familiar with that. Create another table called Heroes, insert uh, Batman and Superman, and I'm passing in the ID of the comic book company as the foreign key so that they are related to each other. So we have two records, Batman and Superman, and they both have a foreign key relationship with DC in the other table. Okay, so now I'm, my query is going to be a join. So I want to get the hero and its ID and the ID of the comic book company and its name out of the database and doing a join between heroes and comic book company just based on that foreign key relationship. Now with my query statement, it gets a little more complex. I'm specifying multiple type parameters. So I'm telling Dapper, for each row you give me, I want you to chop it up into multiple parts. Chop the first part into hero chop the second part in the comic book company, and then at the end, I want you to give me a collection of hero. All right? And then I specify a lambda to say, okay, when you've chopped up that hero and that company into their own objects, I want to relate them to each other. So the hero's company is the company that you gave me, and then return the hero. So when I uh, execute this, I'm going to get back a collection of two heroes, Superman and Batman, and each of them will have a um, property uh, that links them to DC. So down here in the, in the results, you can see the first hero I've gotten is Batman. His ID is one. His comic book company's name is DC, and his comic book company's ID is also one. So I've just related those objects to each other uh, by splitting up the, these columns and using this lambda. So uh, before you have some, I think the question you might be asking is how does it know where to split up these fields? So by default, Dapper is going to say, uh, look for ID, a column named ID, and it's going to draw the line there. And say so everything before ID goes into the first type you specify. Everything including and after goes in the next type you specify. And if you have three, four, five, six or so, you can, it does the same thing. So you have more and more types out here as you do that. Okay, so now questions. Yeah. It is, it is not. So it's instantiating uh, a company for each row. Yeah, up there in green. Uh, so the question was, can you override the name of the column that splits the objects? Yes, because not everyone has columns named ID in the database, right? So we can, actually, that's the next slide, I think, is you can specify the name of the column to split. 
Yeah. How would you implement lazy loading on top of this? Um, I don't think you can on Dapper. Um, you would you'd probably have to do, you'd probably have to write an ORM basically that uses Dapper to do some lazy loading. Yeah. Correct, yeah. So the question is you can't just scramble fields. They have to be in a specific order here because Dapper is going to chop them up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so Dapper, is, so the question is, is the mapping. I didn't do a manual mapping. Um, Dapper is mapping those up based on the, the name. So it's going to say ID. That goes into the hero's ID property, just based on the name. So I don't have to map those up manually. Uh, all the way in the back. Yeah, it, it can use, the, if you specify an alias, it does use the alias of the results that you select. So if I said... Uh, hero name as superhero name. It would try to map to a property called superhero name. Oh, right, right. Well, so I notice that these are both named ID in here, but in their SQL results, that that's allowed. Two columns that named ID, but they're different columns, right? That maybe not make sense in C sharp because you can't have two properties in the same name. But in, in the result set, it's going to know that those are two different columns. Yeah. Does your object have to have a default constructor for this? Does your object have to have a default constructor? Yes. I believe so. Yeah. So can you get the type to map based on the table alias instead of the ID column? And I don't think so. Um, I'm not sure if the table alias is actually information that's in the result set. I could absolutely be wrong about that. Um, but uh, that, that was open source. So if that can be done, that would be a pretty cool feature, I think. Okay. Whew. Well, I'm scared to get to the next part because it's even a little more complicated. But. Uh, that is, so I just want to reiterate, this is the, it's going to chop it up. So the first few columns is going to be hero. The second set of columns will be comic book company. And this is what actually gets returned, is a collection of type hero. And I can specify, I think the max is seven total. That's just a C-sharp limitation. Seven total type, uh, type parameters there. And the lambda there defines the relationship. So I could define this however I wanted to. I can even choose not to define it for whatever reason. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, this is this, the split on example. Oops, so down here I can say, well up here I don't have ID anymore, so I'm not using the dapper default, so I can say, well split on company ID instead. So draw the line right here, and everything before goes into hero, everything ap including and after goes into comic book company. And if I have multiple, then I can specify an array of split on fields. So if, you, if your convention doesn't follow Dapper's convention, no problem, just slip in some slip split ons there. All right, so just more split on information there. Here's a little more complex example just to drive the point home a little bit. Now I've introduced Sidekick. So Sidekick maps to Hero, Hero maps to Comic Book Company. Here's the setup, so I'm creating a, same thing as before, a comic book company, uh, one hero this time, Batman, and one sidekick, Robin. Now I'm doing two inner joins, and now I'm splitting it up by three types, sidekick, hero, comic book company. I'm returning a collection of sidekicks. My lambda here now defines my sidekick's relationship to hero, and my hero's relationship to comic book company. And then here's all the tests to show that that, that works. Yeah. So the question is, is, the reason I couldn't use the same type for both heroes and sidekicks? I think it's really, I think, a database design or application design question. Because the sidekick is a hero, right, in some sense. I just wanted to give you a contrived example to show that relationship there. No. 
could just be a different table or, or the same table. Okay, so just to visualize, visualize that a little bit, here's that same query up here, although I think I changed the ID names for some reason. Um, but here is some uh, sample data of sidekicks and heroes and, com and companies. So Dapper is just going to split those up right there. But remember, it's going to return a re record for each row. So it's going to return, for the, each of these rows, it's going to return three objects. You'll get the sidekick object. It will also instantiate these you can map them to that sidekick object. So there would be a total of 18 objects instantiated, right? Six times three? 18 objects instantiated by Dapper. Yeah? Yes, you can specify multiple split-ons. Right, and I had, I had to do that in this case, right? Because hero ID and comic book company ID are, are different. Okay, so we just saw the easy one-to-one, -one, and I use the word easy, uh, don't use it very lightly there, but parent-to-child mapping. We can also do, with Dapper, a one-to-many relationship. And I say this, we can do it with Dapper, we can also, um, oh, hang on, I guess I uh, missed a slide here. Yeah, so we can do this with Dapper. I have a, a, a new domain here, so Starship, it has a name, as a collection of crew members in that Starship, and then I have a crew member, which is just a name. So now I have the reverse of what I had before. It's a one-to-many relationship. So we can do this in Dapper. It can be done. We can also feed a dog broccoli. <laughs> All right? These are both possibilities. It's not necessarily going to be uh, as easy as you might think. It takes a little bit of extra work to do it in Dapper. Uh, if you do this a lot, you may want to consider some, some sort of helper classes or methods to refactor this. Or if you do this really a lot, you may want to consider using a full-blown ORM, at least for your uh, writes. Um, because this is just going to be a, a, little, a little more work to do. So I'll show you an example here. Here's the setup as before. So I'm creating a Starship Enterprise here, um, creating two crew members, Kirk and Spock, and they get uh, map to that original starship there. So very basic setup. Now my query says, okay, give me all the starships and join it with the crew members. So I have a, a result now that has all those joined together. <clears throat> this is the extra work I'm talking about, this part right here. So instead of actually returning, using the starships return from Dapper, I'm going to create a lookup collection instead. Up, up here called uh, lookup, it's just a collection of starships. So as Dapper goes through and executes this lambda for each row, it's gonna split up the data into starship and crew member. It's going to check out that lookup table to see if I've already gotten that ship before. And if I have not, it's going to take that ship and add it to the list, to my lookup list. And then uh, we'll go on using that ship. And then we'll new up the crew members collection if it's null, um, just to make sure it has, it has a list there. And then we'll add that crew member to the, chip, to the ship. The next time we come around, our lookup table already has Enterprise. So we don't, we grab it from the lookup and then add the crew member to that ship. And we repeat the process until we get to a different ship like Enterprise D. Then we create a new object, add it to lookup. So it's a little bit of extra work here. But it can be done. And notice down here at the end, I'm saying return null because I'm basically ignoring the collection that Dapper's giving me in favor of this lookup that I'm constructing. So we can see the assertions here that I have one starship in my lookup table. It's the Enterprise. It has two crew members, and they are Kirk and Spock. So, um, I have a visualization coming up next, but any questions on, on this method so far? Yes, so it's getting all the, it's splitting up these objects for you from each row, and then you're establishing the relationship here in C Sharp. Right, this is not happening in SQL or anything like that. This is all happening in your C Sharp code uh, as, as Dapper is progressing through the result set. It's applying this lambda. Okay. 
So here is a visualization of a potential result set. I have Enterprise, Enterprise D, and then here are the crew members there. So what I'm essentially doing with that method is I'm saying, I'm going to take the first starship, I'm going to map Kirk to it. The second starship, I'm going to basically discard that. I don't want to keep that. I want to use this one that I instantiated before and add Spock to it. So I, I'm still getting this object, but I'm just, by this lookup method, I'm just ignoring it. I'm saying I already have it. Ignore the second one you gave me. I'm doing the same thing down here with Enterprise D. Take the first one, put it in the lookup table, add crew member, add crew member, add crew member, discard these two objects. So Dapper is still instantiating for me uh, 10 objects, but I'm discarding three of them with the lookup table. All right, so that is the really complex multi-mapping stuff with Dapper. And like I said, you, if you're doing this a lot, if you're doing this a little, this is not that big a deal. If you're doing it a lot, you probably should create some helpers, um, some helper classes to get you through this, or even consider using an ORM for stuff that's really complex relationships. I mean, I'm, I'm just showing you a one-to-many, a single one-to-many. It's more complex than that. You may want to consider um, bringing in a different or a different ORM if you need that relationship to exist in C sharp. Yeah. Okay. So the so the question is, how do you handle updates with that same type of collection? Um, and th there is no real easy answer to this. You have to construct multiple updates, um, probably looping through to create those. And you can make them all part of the same transaction, the same command, do it to execute at the same time. But you have to build those commands up. Um, you know, it's just, there's no, no easy way around that. That's not a feature that Dapper or MicroORMs have. And again, you might want to consider a situation where if you're doing a lot of reads, if you have a, like a command query separation, you may want to put all your reads into Dapper and put all your writes into an Hibernate Entity Framework because that's really what it's best at is doing those complex writes. And you're going to spend less time doing those, so you're not going to take as big as performance hit. Over here. So, uh, very good segue. The question is, can you specify one query for the Starship and one query for the crew members and have Dapper do both of those in the same uh, query or the same connection? And the answer is yes. You can actually do a multiple result in Dapper. So, if you want to send out multiple select queries together, Dapper can put them all, can handle all that and map them all for you. So, here's a quick example of that. So, I've created three tables inserted a row of data into each one, and now I have three queries to select that data back out, three separate queries in one string here. And then I'm actually going to call this query multiple extension, which is the last one on the list I was going to cover. Uh, so Dapper knows that I'm giving it multiple, uh, a, a query that's going to result in multiple result sets. And then I get this uh, object here. This is actually a grid reader object that's also part of Dapper. So I can say, with that grid reader, give me the first result set. That's the read. And then in my example, I'm just saying, give me the first row from that result set. Because I know there's only one row in that table. And then I call read again. It's going to go on to the next result set. And I call read again. It's going to the third result set. And if I had four, five, six, I could keep doing dot reads until I'm at the end of all those result sets. And so I, my assertion here is that these fields are one, two, and three, which is what I inserted there. Uh, a question. Um, sure. Do you use full procedures with Dapper? Yes. So uh, I don't know if you missed it early on. I kind of touched on it briefly. There's a command type parameter you can pass in to use store procedures. All right, so I did kind of lie earlier about uh, Dapper only having five extensions. There's actually another object called GridReader, which is the multi, um, 
multiple results tests we just looked at. It has basically two methods, read and read of type T. I showed you the read in the last one. Read of T is the same sort of thing as that where we're specifying a type, and there's async versions of each of those. Okay, so that's multiple result sets. Any questions on that? Doing pretty good on time, but we may get to those uh, unit tests. All right. Last thing I want to cover is errors. Dapper is, like I said, just an, a set of extension methods that extend an existing implementation of, of ADO.NET. So when you write a SQL query incorrectly, the error you get is going to be from that provider and not from Dapper itself. So I just want to make sure, this, this may be obvious to you, I just want to make sure it's clear. So if I write a query that says this is invalid SQL, that's not a valid SQL query, right? So the error we're going to get back is actually of type SQLite exception. It's not a Dapper exception, anything like that. Dapper will throw whatever you write into the engine, and then the engine will give you the error. So if you're using SQL Server, this is going to be a, what is it, SQL DB connection? Is that what it is? Oracle will have its own exception, et cetera. So this is just driving home the point that Dapper is essentially uh, a, a very efficient wrapper around existing implementations. Okay, so that is uh, all I got. Uh, I do have some contact info here. You can find my email, my Twitter, and so on at about.me slash hemgroves. All the code from today's session, all the slides as well, are available on GitHub. There's a repository there called Switch to Dapper, I think. Something Dapper in the name. Yeah. So the, uh, if you go to the Dapper website, they have the uh, benchmarks right there in the front page. I think they did something like a, a, SQL, a complex SQL query 500 times, and they recorded how much time it took in ADO versus Dapper. And I think over those 500 times, it turned out to be like a two millisecond difference, something like that. But the details are there on the Dapper site. Dapper's on GitHub as well. I have a blog. I haven't written much lately, but technical blog, a lot of AOP content on there. I also have a book that I wrote, which has nothing to do with Dapper, but you should all buy anyway. Makes a great Christmas gift. Also, there's a coupon here, 42% off, so you can buy twice as many. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I try to get rid of those. You're talking about these right here. I, I didn't notice this until too late. These are actually, what is it called, Code Lens. It's built into Visual Studio. Uh, I, I, they were distractions. I tried to take them out, but I didn't get them all in time. I apologize for that one up here, too. That's just a Visual Studio feature. Oh, okay, sorry. It's only an ultimate feature, 2013, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So the connection itself, Dapper does not mess with. So you have to open the connection before you use Dapper and close it afterwards. Uh, the, what, the using I was showing you was for that grid reader, which you do have to dispose. That's a Dapper object you have to dispose when you're done. So if you're doing the multiple result sets. Yeah. Yeah, you can do a store procedure. Uh, just like I said, there's a command type parameter. You just specify store procedure, and it'll give you the results back, just like it would a regular SQL query. Um, I'm assuming parameters work the same way with, with Dapper. I don't use store procedures and Dapper too much together, so. But it is possible. OK. So the question is about assemble crud? Simple crud. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of Dapper extensions out there that actually might have been absorbed into it, like Dapper Rainbow and other things like that, that give you a little bit more uh, helpers to use Dapper. But I haven't used those too much. So. OK, 
And if there's any more questions, you guys can come down and talk to me. I'm glad to talk to you. Uh, whoever wanna do the unit test thing, come over here and we'll, we'll give it a try and see what happens. Thank you very much.